You probably use it in your yard. Farmers use it in their field, and you know it as Roundup. It's a chemical as common as it is controversial. Tom Lydon of the Fox 9 Investigators is here to separate the scare from the science. Tom? Well, for years, the joke was that Roundup was safe enough to drink. No one is making that joke anymore. Thousands of farmers are suing Monsanto, claiming the active ingredient in Roundup is giving them cancer. And many are now beginning to question the pesticide's effect on the rest of us. It's turned into a high-stakes scientific debate with billions of dollars on the line. The fall harvest in Minnesota, when farmers reap what they sow. You have to protect that crop or else you're not going to be in business anymore. A harvest is much about science as seeds. When it first came out, yeah, it was a perfect chemical. A chemical that's both savior and suspect. Problems are slow and insidious. A controversy as close as your dinner table. I'm not going to go out and dig up all the research on it. That's what your job is. Uh, a lot of the time we'll be out here from about uh, 7 a.m. until 10 o'clock at night. Zach Johnson calls himself the Minnesota millennial farmer. He's the fifth generation on this land in central Minnesota. Basically, glyphosate is Roundup. Um, we just have generic versions now. And the first with a YouTube channel, where he documents life on the farm right down to what he sprays on his crops. How long have you known about glyphosate? Uh, I've known about glyphosate my whole life. Glyphosate is the most popular pesticide on the planet by far. A weed killer used on suburban lawns and golf courses, along highways, and on much of the world's food supply. Glyphosate is the active ingredient in Roundup, made by Monsanto since 1974. Today it's available in hundreds of generic formulations from a dozen companies. It was discovered by John Franz, a Monsanto scientist who got his PhD in organic chemistry from the University of Minnesota. It's not really a herbicide, it's really a growth hormone. Where today, Professor Paul Capel studies glyphosate in the water supply in the upper Midwest, mostly from farm runoff. He says it's practically everywhere, yet very difficult and expensive to test for. I often have talked about it as being a big experiment uh, on ourselves. I mean, in, in this part of the world, in the Midwest, we apply glyphosate on something like 60 to 80 percent of the total landscape. So, uh, and we've never done that with a chemical before. And so it is forcing the environment to react somehow. And whether uh, it's a benign reaction or something more serious, I don't think we know. By itself, glyphosate is a relatively simple molecule and breaks down easily. It works by targeting an enzyme found in plants, but not found in humans or animals. For decades, it's been considered non-toxic. A scientist once famously claimed it was safe enough to drink. Yes, uh, you want to drink some? We have some here. I'd be happy to, actually. But you, not, not really, but... Not really? I know it wouldn't hurt I mean, me. If, if, if you say so, I have some glyphosate. No, no, I'm not stupid. The game changer for glyphosate came in the mid-1990s, about the time Monsanto's patent on it was set to expire. That's when the company developed genetically modified corn and soybeans. Modified to be resistant to glyphosate. So you can now spray as much of it on the crop as you want it, and it will kill the weeds, but not the crop. This technology is way too important to have uh, taken away from them. Scott Partridge is Monsanto's vice president for global strategy. This product has been studied extensively by the EPA over and over again, by the European Union, the regulatory authorities in Japan, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, Germany. I, I know I'm leaving some out. It has been looked at over and over again, Tom, and it is safe. The controversy began two years ago in Europe when IARC, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, convened a panel of 11 scientists to review the research concluding glyphosate was a probable human carcinogen based on limited evidence in humans and sufficient evidence in experimental animals. 
Critics point out it puts glyphosate in the same category as chemicals found in table salt, red meat, and fermented vegetables. And Reuters recently uncovered early drafts of the IARC report showing revisions that edited out studies, some financed by Monsanto, that failed to show a cancer link. The European Union is now considering a ban on glyphosate. In the U.S., California followed IARC's lead, calling glyphosate a probable carcinogen with warning labels to appear in 2018. And for the last year, the Minnesota Health Department has been reviewing glyphosate as a pesticide of concern. As we've been looking through the evidence, one of the things we've come to realize is that there's a study saying yes, and there's a study saying no for every single, every single health condition you can imagine. Um, so it's, it's very difficult to determine exactly what is going on. I'm sure I had it on my hands at some time. Raymond Harold spent 40 years handling glyphosate on his farm near Little Falls. Now he wonders whether he's paying the price. Last year, he was diagnosed with stage four non-Hodgkin lymphoma. His son, who farmed with him, died from cancer a few years ago. Um, do you believe your non-Hodgkin's lymphoma was caused or is connected to Roundup glyphosate? I can't say. I don't know. I, the doctor didn't tell me that. But the lawyers did. If you or a loved one were exposed to Roundup weed killer and were later diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma... A few months ago, he saw a commercial like this one and became one of more than 3,000 agricultural workers nationwide suing Monsanto, claiming glyphosate caused their cancer. As part of that litigation, lawyers got their hands on hundreds of internal Monsanto documents. The so-called Monsanto papers include an email from an executive discussing how useful a certain regulator with the EPA could be, and questions about the safety of Roundup, which contains other chemicals. A Monsanto executive writes, you cannot say that Roundup is not a carcinogen. We can make that statement about glyphosate and can infer that there is no reason to believe that Roundup would cause cancer. The emails also show Monsanto orchestrating a campaign to discredit a French study of rats fed Roundup, showing it caused tumors, cancer, and early death. Monsanto claims the rats were prone to tumors anyway. The study was retracted. The editor of the journal later got a contract with Monsanto. And a lot of times their reputations are, are taken quite a hit because if they come up with a study that shows harm, boy, the industry goes after them. Carrie Gillum just wrote Whitewash, a book about Monsanto's protection of a product that brings in $5 billion a year. Follow the money. So Monsanto and the chemical companies that make billions of dollars off of these um, products, Monsanto makes billions of dollars off of glyphosate-related products every year, you know, they have a very vested interest in spinning the science and pushing the science that they pay for, um, that they interpret, and that they tell the regulators how to interpret. Unfortunately, it's follow the dollars, and these plaintiff's lawyers believe that they have found a way to make money. I mean, it seems like both sides are sort of spinning the science. Is that not the case? Uh, Tom, no, we're, we're not spinning the science. The science is not our science. This is independent science that has been generated over 40 years, over 600 studies, scientific medical studies. The EPA, which is currently reviewing glyphosate, has generally gone along with Monsanto, and that doesn't look like it'll change. The new director for its pesticide review board came from the American Chemistry Council, the main industry trade group. It's okay to ask questions because this, after all, this is where your food comes from. Small amounts of glyphosate have also been found in breads and cereals, residue detected on fruits and nuts. And yet the EPA, the FDA, and the USDA do not regularly test for glyphosate. They never have. It's the fact that they think it's safe that prevents them from feeling the need to test for it. Stephanie Seneff is a research scientist at MIT who's published papers describing how glyphosate interferes with human gut bacteria and may be responsible for rising rates of everything from autism to gluten intolerance. Our digestive system is really getting disrupted through the exposure to glyphosate. You understand, Professor, the criticism of your research is that you are confusing correlation with causation. If you take it from the standpoint of asking the question, what is that something? Glyphosate is your prime candidate. 
And, uh, you know, what I'm really concerned about is uh, the known carcinogens, which are far more dangerous than, than the probable ones. And things like that contain uh, sunshine and bacon and beer. Farmers like Zach Johnson say if they didn't use glyphosate, they'd simply use pesticides that everyone agrees are more toxic. And that may happen anyway, because nature always finds a way. This is mostly giant ragweed. There are now at least 15 weeds resistant to glyphosate. The question is whether we too are resistant. Will we be able to adapt as well? The lawsuits against Monsanto are being consolidated in federal court in California. The first case is scheduled for trial next year, but litigation could go on for decades. Meanwhile, the controversy over glyphosate is threatening Monsanto's proposed merger with the German pharmaceutical giant Bayer. It's a $66 billion acquisition that would create the world's largest seed and pesticide company.